Within your PC gaming setup, I bet you spend a lot of money on your PC internals, whether that be your GPU or CPU or anything else packed inside it, and then you also spend a lot of money on your gaming monitor. But be honest with me here, let us know down in the comments how much attention or how much money did you spend on your audio setup for gaming. I bet there's more out there than we'd like to admit that push their gaming audio to the side and don't give it as much attention as everything else within your setup. And that makes me sad, not just because I'm very passionate about audio, whether it be music or gaming, but just because I feel like you're missing out on so much. Gaming audio can immerse you and pull you into that game, make you feel like your character, or if you're playing an FPS game, make you feel like you're right within that map. And that's exactly what the product does that we're gonna talk about today, the Ace Zone gaming headsets. And I know many of you are familiar with these, as many of you have asked me to cover them, but we're gonna be talking about these today as a gamer, as a true user. We're gonna be talking about the A-Rise and the A-Spire here. Two significantly different headsets, but with the main same goal at the end of the road. That is FPS gaming. But of course, no matter what headset or headphone we're talking about, we have to kick it off with comfort. And this is the first area where you're gonna notice some significant difference one to the other. So when we get the A-Spire and we're gonna put it on a scale here, we are getting, oh, let me get over to grams here. This is a little easier. 288 grams on these guys. And then when we get the A rise and slap it on the scale, we are getting 544 grams. So as you can see, there is clear as day a difference within the weight of these headsets. And that also plays a lot into the build and the sound, which you'll catch throughout this video. Now, just taking a look at these headsets top down, you can clear as day see significant differences right out the gate. Number one, talking about the ear pads. If you look at the dimensions here, both of them are plenty big and plenty wide, but you can see the A-Rise are clear as day, bigger right there. Hopefully you can see those dimensions. None of my ears are touching the inside of the drivers on either of these right here, so that's not an issue. As far as the headband, nice and plush over here on the A-Spire. Come over to the A-Rise, a little bit firmer, and that goes right into the ear pads here. You look at the A-Spire, they're a little bit more plush. You can see they're fully pleather inside and out, which goes along to the uh, sound, which we're gonna talk about here shortly. But again, they are significantly plusher. Coming over here to the A-Rise, they are firm as holy smokes. Let me pop one off here. By the way, they attach by magnets there, but I don't know if the camera can even pick up this density, but just watch when I push here and you see it give way all the way around. That's how firm you can see it right there. Usually when you press something down, it's just gonna give it that one spot. But right there, you can see, and that's all the way around. Again, coming over here to the A Spire, when you just press it, it's just in that one spot where it gives way. So an easy way for me to sum up the A Spire here, as far as the comfort, the fit, the maneuverability, again, you got all that swivel, it actually folds up right here. It's pretty much a spit and image of like the Bose QC Comforts, the QC2s, whatever they were called, right? You got that swivel, you got that bend. Now the Bose are a little bit lighter, the ear pads are a whole lot more plush, but again, that's gonna play a lot into, again, like I state the sound. You hear me say that a lot. This plays in a sound, that plays in a sound, this plays in a sound, and it's all gonna come together. And a lot of that that I just mentioned on the A-Rise truly goes into the sound. Talking about the comfort here, right? We mentioned these are kind of like bows. You put them on, they're pretty comfortable. You can get down with them for a long time. Coming over here to the A-Rise. Oh my gosh, no joke. This is the most uncomfortable headset I have ever worn. These ear pads, no joke are stiff. The clamping force is no joke firm. I feel it press on my glasses. Even if I take my glasses off and use them, which then I'm not gonna be able to see my screen, so we're not gonna be doing that. But even with my glasses off, they are firm and they just grip onto your head like, oh my gosh. Now, as far as the build of these headsets, again, significantly different. Over here on the A-Spire, it's pretty much all plastic. You got your metal reinforced headband in there. Again, you got those points right there to fold in to kind of be adjustable for travel and such. Coming over here to the A-Rise, all of this is metal. Coming over here to the forks, up into the arms, into that bracket inside. We know a lot of companies will chintz out and just make this plastic, but no, every single thing right here is metal. Now your ear cups are plastic and going up here into your headband, but again, this thing is rock stinking solid. And that is where that weight comes into play. So I kid you not, the build of the A-Rise here is hands down industrial. This thing is an absolute tank, but it does again play into that weight. 
And then also, like I've been stating, the sound as far as that clamping force and then that metal really holding it there so it's not going to give way like a plastic over time. You're wearing it, you're stretching it out over time. That plastic's going to loosen up and that clamping force will just get looser and looser and looser over time, right? Talking about a big heavy-duty metal headset like this with all those points, that's going to hold that clamp force for you. Again, this thing is just my gosh, it is premium. Now let's go ahead and take a look at features and functions on these gaming headsets. This might be the one area where they're kind of similar a little bit. As you all notice, they have their built-in microphones right here, which are not detachable. And they got the flip up, which you can just tilt it forward here and then back. But there's no click point. As you see, it's got the little thing there where you can attach it on and you can take that off actually if you want. But there's no clicky point here. So you got to make sure it goes all the way back. And what I notice sometimes, if I have it just slightly forward, it wouldn't actually mute. So you got to make sure it's like all the way to the back. And again, that's on both of them here where you got that tilt microphone. Now, as you're seeing on the left ear cup, you got your power button and then this multi-function button down here, which is going to control some of your sound profiles or like your uh, uh, noise cancellation. Over here, you have your play, your volume up, your skip tracks and stuff, which you can use these headsets Bluetooth, but it's not simultaneous. It's either Bluetooth or one of the audio connections which is on the bottom here. As you see, you got USB-C and then 3.5 here. So these headsets, they do come with their USB and then the 3.5. And this is how you get your audio. Again, you can use them Bluetooth, but it's just Bluetooth, right? It's not one or the other. So once you actually plug in your 3.5 or USB, the Bluetooth goes away right there. And of course, you don't want to game with Bluetooth. It's just going to be a little bit laggy, okay? So one thing I did notice, and I don't want to gripe here, but this is the USB that came with the headset over here on the A-Rise. And it goes in there, and it holds decently, but there's nothing really gripping it on. Let me get the cable for the, no, the A-Spire, my bad, A-Rise over here. So this is a USB for the A-Rise, and when you put it in, it hangs down here, and this kind of hits your shoulder. And you just feel it get kind of loose and it pops out significantly easier than it should. I really think there needs to be a USB that's going to go in there and grip and really lock in a play. So I had to pull out one of my Razer USBs, get it in here, and it's in there a whole lot more firmer. I would always notice the cable that came with it. This is not with the headset because, again, I tested it with different USBs but the USB that came with mine would constantly slide out. But I want to show you the app here real quick, and it's connected via Bluetooth. And yes, the Bluetooth will be active to your phone using this app while you are gaming. So like I stated, not simultaneous where, say if you're running 3.5 or USB, you're not going to be able to play your music or anything like that, but you will still be able to control via the app. And as you adjust it, it saves to the headset here. So anyways, as you see here, you got your audio, you got pro gaming, you come down here, you got gaming and music, Gaming and Music ANC off, and then user one where you can come over here and set your custom. You can hit your equalizer, and then just kind of dabble with some of that stuff. And it tells you right here, adjust bass and treble, so your equalizer is quite minimal there. Uh, you got side tone, your transparency, which as you all know, that's how you hear people through your uh, microphone. And again, that goes back into play as far as putting a microphone all the way back. Because if you got just a little bit, just a pinch forward, it's going to pick it up. And again, if you got the transparency on, you'll see exactly what I'm talking about. So the weird thing is you got to make sure it's all the way to the back. Kind of weird. Kind of. I wish there was a click or something to really hold it there, right? Anyways, you got uh, voice and mic mods right here or modes where you can go into advanced and kind of tweak it up. Then you got your A and C, come over here to your system. Again, you got your voice prompts. And right down here, you can actually go right to the user's manual and see some of the shortcuts you have in there. Now, it's pretty much the exact same over here. Let me go on and fire this headset up on, and I'm going to show you it power on, and I'm going to show you it sync up. Let me go on and turn this one off. Probably confused because it just had that one. There we go. So anyways, you see you got gaming and music over on this one. You got A-Zone, CSGO, and Apex Legend. You don't have that pro gaming, which we're going to talk about more into the sound. Noise cancellation right down here. As you see, transparency, noise cancellation, or off. And this can be adjusted right on that button back that I talked about. Then you come over here to music. You have balanced, immersive, and impactful. So it kind of goes like, think of it like less bass, more bass, and even more bass down there. Then, of course, back down here to your system. ANC button, again, right back there, transparency, noise cancellation, and then your voice prompts, your battery level, and then again to your user manual. So now let's go ahead and get a listen to these microphone tests, and we're plugged straight up via USB. And, and again, one thing I forgot to mention, as far as the microphone, whenever you take it 
and get it all the way up to that mute position, it'll actually tell you in the headset, mic muted. And then whenever you put it back down, it'll say mic active. Let's see if there's a noise within the recording here. So it just went mic muted, mic unmuted. I didn't see anything come up on the screen right there. So hopefully we didn't get, you know, you got that click in some headsets, which again, I do like. But again, you're not going to get that disturbance within this not having that click. So I don't know. Pro or con, that's for you to decide. As far as the microphone, I got no sound dampening in my room. I got a fan on right above us. And this is what the microphone sounds like. Uh, one other thing I want to mention, uh, as far as the microphone on this, and I noticed myself, I'm like, oh, shoot, I lost it. This windscreen comes off very, very easy on this headset. Now, it comes with an extra one in the box. Both headsets do. But holy smokes, it comes off so, so easy. So I, I don't know, maybe a little double-sided tape or something to keep it connected there because you will end up losing it. And now you're hearing a microphone from the Aspire here. And this one does not do the mute function like I talked about there where it lets you know, hey, it's muted or it's active. I'm going to flip it up right here. And then down, we are back to active. So again, no noise right there, but you don't get any notification. And this one, this is the one that's significantly worse. Like when I pull it up here, still not muted, not muted, not muted. Am I still picking up? Yeah, see, it's still picking up right there. And it's pretty much all the way up. Pinch right there. You can see it's pretty much all the way up. Pull it down and it's back to active. So this is the one that's really, really sensitive. Again, I wish both of them had like that locking position. You do got this little deal. But again, even though your mic is so moldable, very nicely moldable on these headsets that you can mistake that, hey, it's not in that full position there. So I think that is a stinker. But again, as far as the microphones, I think they do the job. I'm not seeing it pick up drastically amount. My, my concern here is how much of the reverberation is it picking up. Again, I got that fan on and no sound dampening right here. But as far as features and functions on these headsets, yeah, there's a little bit of difference, but the differences really play in the sound, not necessarily the features and functions one to the other. All right, so now that we're done with all of that, let's go on and get to the most important and the most juicy topic on both of these headsets here. That is talking about sound. And there are some similarities. You're talking 42 millimeter drivers over here with the freeze range of 20 to 20,000. Over here, you got 40 millimeter drivers with the freeze range of 20 to 20,000. As far as battery life, you got 35 hours over here and 15 hours over here. But again, your main use of these, you're going to be plugging them in via USB. And yes, they do charge while you use them. So as far as that battery life, it's more or less if you're running 3.5 or Bluetooth. But the recommended use of these is running via USB. So talking about the sound of these, again, I got to show you, I was comparing them up and testing them between many different headsets and headphones here, up to $1,000 Odyssey, my Triforce Driver Razors, over here we got our Jubilee 58X, and then our ever so popular Odyssey Maxwells. Just so you know some of the comparisons I was pairing up to these, because these headsets really threw me, I don't want to say for a loop, but just really made me awe. Like I was like, this, this is something different than I've really tested. And again, like I said in the beginning, the only other product that really, or headset that made me do this before were the Odyssey Penrose, where it's like, you gotta try these to really see what I'm talking about. I'm gonna try to explain it as good as I can, right? And everything we've talked about so far comes in to this area here as far as sound, right? Number one, the fully pleather ear pads. It's locked them in, you got that A and C right here. So it blocks out that sound if you got a noisy environment, you have it there. Now, the cool thing about the A and C on these, it's not so much, number one, it's not as good as a core A and C. I'm going to say that, okay? Catch me right there. Stick with me. But the core A and C on the Bose, I think is fantastic. As it really is. But you get that slight white noise in the background. I didn't experience that with these, which I don't like that in a lot of gaming headsets. When you get that white noise kind of interfering with the game, I'm like, oh man, it sounds like a little bit of static there, right? I didn't get that here. So the noise canceling was good. Definitely much, much better over here. And where that's coming into play, like I stated before, with the comfort is that clamping force. These guys are tight. Now, it's gonna be better if you're not wearing glasses, so you're not gonna have that little gap right there where you can get a little bit more noise in. But again, the clamping force and those firm pads play a massive role into the noise canceling here. So again, you got clamping force, the pads, and then the noise cancellation software within it. Again, all working together to help you out with that. Talking about this being an FPS, you know, pro gaming esports type of headset, you don't want that crowd or any of that noise, number one, interrupting you right there, right? Interrupting into your game. You want to be able to get all your sounds. And that's what you got here. Now, coming over to these guys, you still got that, 
but it was not near as impactful or noticeable as these guys. This guy almost just shut you off, you know? You still had it very, very good over here, but again, definitely different, right? More comfortable, looser on the head. So again, it's not gripping in. You don't got those drivers smacking right into you right there, really locking into your head shape. Now, more importantly, talking to that ANC, that goes big time into the sounding. Talking about it being FPS. And you saw the profiles I showed you within the app there. A lot of it was geared towards FPS games. Counter Strike, Apex, right? Pro gaming over here. And I've never been one to play Counter Strike before. This is the first time. They said, hey, you should try Counter Strike out with this. Yada, yada. I'm like, all right, let me give it a dabble. And holy smokes, was it amazing. Number one, I had fun playing the game. But I think the reason I had so much fun playing the game is using this, the footsteps, the reloads, everything I heard with detail that I have never heard before. Those are bold words. Those are very bold words. I know it, I know it. But holy smokes, I can't stress it enough, the amount of detail I got from these. So I was like, okay, it's messing with my head. Let me go on and try these guys out and see. And I still got it over here. I still got that detail of the footsteps. Nothing near what this was, but still very close. And it's that combination, pleather ear pads, right? The ANC, and then you got the FPS profile in there. So you got a little bit of software tweaking here, a little bit of that build thrown into one. And then I pulled out my other headsets. I'm like, okay, it can't just be these. Let me, let me throw these on and tweak them. Let me dabble with an EQ. Let me pull something else out. And I could not get anything to sound like these. I could get headsets to sound close to this over here. I could, but nothing near like this. And it was just unbelievable the amount of footsteps I would hear coming down the hall over here, turning right. You could hear which way they would turn. And I could sit there and look and it threw me off. I'm like, this is nuts. This is just unbelievable that I can hear them coming down in which direction they're turning. Holy smokes, I, it makes me giddy. You see, I'm stumbling over my words. I don't script, I'm just rambling here. The detail of this within Counter-Strike was amazing. All right, so let's mix it up a little bit right here. Uh, we're all not just playing Counter-Strike. I'm dabbling with a little bit of Halo, a little bit of Fortnite, right? Am I getting that detail? And again, those footsteps and the directional cues that I'm getting within Counter-Strike on this. Talking about Halo, you've heard me mention before, the footsteps are geared a little bit more towards base. And number one, your enemy's not always right on you. The maps aren't as closed in. There's not all these other turns. You got multiple levels, stuff like that. And then of course with Fortnite, with any battle royale, well, you might have an enemy near yet every three minutes or five minutes or something like that. More than half time you're looting, you know what I mean? So no, you don't really get to experience that within Halo or Fortnite over here. And I don't think you get that within Warzone. You know, you're not gonna get that here. Again, Counter-Strike is definitely geared towards that competitive FPS, right? With the sound cues, you don't got all this other gimmicks going on in the background, which is why I'm really having a blast with it, you know? But talking about Halo or Call of Duty or Fortnite, I had more fun with these guys over here. I did, because I had a little bit more of that body. I had some of that fun with the background sounds, getting pulled into the game a little bit more. I wouldn't say Fortnite or anything like that is as competitive as like Counter-Strike, maybe Halo. But again, you got a music and stuff going on in the background of Halo, a little bit more gimmicky stuff than Counter-Strike. And that's where these really differentiate and separated. Now, me personally, I'm not only playing FPS games. I love a good story game. You all know I play the heck out of Destiny, love playing Diablo lately, and the new Assassin's Creed. And talking about all those games there, there's a little more immersion, a little bit more body, a little more bass, deeper environmental sounds, abilities, and weapons, and dialogue, and stuff like that, rather than Counter-Strike, where you got footsteps, reloads, and, and gunshots, you know what I mean? So talking about playing, let's focus on Diablo, because that's what I've been playing the most lately, right? Both of these headsets struggled in that department, honestly. Number one, the base, right? So Diablo, again, the abilities, you got a whole lot going on with the monsters, the yada, 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 all sorts of stuff going on. And with either of these, even when I got in there and cranked up the bass or went into more immersive or impactful, put it into music mode, the bass was jumbly, it was dirty, it was, it just couldn't hold on, right? No matter what was going on, it was breaking apart. It just, oh gosh, it sounded horrible. 
It, it really did. So uh, bringing it over to Destiny, where you got a little mix of all of them, like running through Destiny and um, you know, firing my weapons, like that was great. But once I got into a hot heated moment, that's where they started falling apart as far as that immersion. And I'm playing Destiny or Diablo. I don't want just highs. I'm sorry, I don't. I want to feel like I'm on that battlefield right there. I want to feel like I'm within that scene. Me personally, again, that's where immersion comes into play, which makes gaming so much fun, especially with the audio. But just straight up, you do not get that with these. And if you try to go into any of those settings, immersion or bass or anything like that, they fall apart. So at the end of the day, the audio of these headsets are definitely FPS focused here, but I think they sit in different classes. This is more or less that FPS game with no fluff. Straight up footsteps, reloads, gunshots, maybe some uh, Rainbow Six, some Counter-Strike. Coming over here to these guys, I would put these more at Halo or a Battle Royale, something like that, where you don't need those pinpoint footsteps each time. That's where this really comes into play. And holy smokes, you really do notice it. But I don't think I would put these as, again, a gaming headset. I would put these clear as day as an FPS gaming headset. So now that we got a good look over of both of these headsets here, I want to talk about the conclusion and my final thoughts on these. And I want you to stick through this here, right? Because this is going to be a real impactful part of these headsets. So number one, the asking price of these headsets, you're talking 360 bucks over here and $800 over here. So again, if you're that serious about your FPS play, that's where these are going to come into play. If you spend that much money on your audio setup, which I don't think 800 bucks is, you know, it's a lot of money. Let me put it that way. <laughs> I'm going to choke over here talking about it, right? I'm over here trying to, how can I word this right? 800 bucks is a lot of money. 360 bucks is a lot of money. 200 bucks for a headset is a lot of money. My audio setup that I primarily use for gaming is roughly around $1,000. And I appreciate good audio. And once you dive into it and give it that chance and experience it for yourself, a lot of you have caught on with the Penrose. You all stayed, ah, too expensive. Once people started testing them and using them and listening, they're like, holy smokes, these are good. Now look at how popular the Maxwells are, right? So once you give it the time, you actually dive into it. If it's that important to you, is FPS gaming that important to you? Are you playing competitive and you want that upper hand? That's where something like this comes into play. Me personally, being casually competitive, no, I couldn't spend 800 bucks on something like this. Would I spend 800 bucks on a good audio product? Heck yeah, all day long. But this one, not for me. So these gaming headsets, no, I can't sit here and say, go get them right now. It's the best thing ever. Hopefully I stressed what really stands out with them and you're catching on right there. And if any of that really resonates with you and it's that important to you, that can justify you picking them up. So all in all, I hope my raspy ramble here helped you out and made you understand the A-Zone headsets a little bit more on a relatable scale here. You can kind of see and justify them for yourself from gamer to gamer here and what is going to justify spending that money in your case. But again, thank you so much for coming by for this video. I hope I was able to help you out. I hope you're able to understand me. If you enjoyed it, please hit that thumbs up. Don't forget to subscribe, and I hope we'll catch you in the next one. Bye now.